And welcome to these Changing Times Radio. You're with uh, Santos Bonacci for the two hours, and I have uh, some special guests with me from uh, last week, Kate of Gaia and uh, Joe Annicelli, who are going to join me uh, in the next meeting off another show on TNS Radio. So they will be but seconds, and we're going to... Um, Probably revisit uh, last week's subject of losing the name, winning the game mostly, and the Denike ultimatum uh, document. And um, welcome, welcome, Joe and Kate. Thank you very much, Santos, for having us on here. I know that I'm here. Kate may be a 30-second digital delay behind me as Kate finishes up the show we were just on. Yeah, excellent. And uh, I'm just... Um, uh, mention to the listeners that I, w I would like to uh, revisit yesterday's, uh, last week's show that we had, we were all together, uh, where we shared information about um, dominion and sovereignty. Yeah, that's Kate coming in live. and that's Yeah, Kate's okay, guys, I'm going to hang up and then I'll tag you when the song's over. i got to end the feed over here too, okay? Yep. I'll join the call when I'm done. We'll be here. Yeah, so, and I thought we'd uh, mix that with a little bit of astrology, which uh, you and I both enjoy as a subject and um, a topic. It's um, one very, very worthy of our attention. I think the two of them together are the most empowering that we have. Joe, what do you think? I think it's a very powerful combination. Thank you very much for letting me add to it. Yes, um... What I love about your YouTube video, Santos, is how you visually show people the movement of planets and you give us a location within the cosmos. You give us a location within the external, visible universe of duality where our personalities are interacting with each other. And I like to look at the charts so you can find out the location of your energy within yourself. It's the other side of the mirror, the other side of the looking glass. And when you can become aware of Santos' external information and become aware of the information I'm providing, which is a, a looking glass to the inside information, your inner cosmos and how they work, and you see the astrological correlations, boy, self-knowledge blossoms, and the next thing you know, you see the beautiful flower of light you are within yourself. And so, yeah, I think it's a very powerful combination, and they're definitely related, definitely. Yeah, both very empowering, and both um, subjects that um, <clears throat> the controllers that were have uh, put a lot of money into um, propaganda which would incline people to uh, not be interested in these subjects. Of course, when you go to church, you're taught that the people who are doing sovereignty are bad people because they are, are um, you know, they're not subject, subjecting themselves to uh, God's, God's kingdom and God's order and God's government, you see. Look, at least, at least 90% of, of corporate churches are saying that. There might be someone listening that belongs to a church that doesn't do that. That's great. But I mean, I know for a fact that Christianity, that corporate Christianity teaches, sit on your hands. Uh, the sovereign movement is not for you. You're already a sovereign in this church and in God's eyes. And God's going to come and deal with the devil. Just you wait and let him do that. That's not none of your business, you know. So, and of course, astrology is being poo-pooed and... Um, I mean, there's been massive propaganda against these subjects. Yes, and I'm really glad that you've helped break through that barrier and through your personal courage and your perseverance, you've brought information to the world that we can physically see on YouTube. And um, for the people who are just tuning in, how, how do people find you on YouTube, Santos? What's the easiest way to find you? Just type in your name? I think so on Google or... Um, uh, Mr. Astro Theology, the, um, my, my uh, YouTube handle. Okay, good. Well, I've got some new people tuning into the show today, and I wanted them to know how to find you. Um, the uh, information that Kate is providing is about, about how to become liberated at the legal system on the world of the planet. 
the information I'm sharing is how to become liberated within through the spiritual dynamics of knowing yourself and how seeing your scientific genetic information as it really is helps liberate you from the falsehood or the lies that you have in your own brain about who you are. And in the same way the church sort of obscured things and governments obscured things, people's own consciousness, people's own thoughts have obscured their own truth because they were conditioned. They were literally repetitively conditioned by society and cultural ways of being and thinking to perform in a way that's absolutely against who they really are. So that's why I think that the charts lead to liberation. You find out what your unique light accumulation energy, whatever you want to call your life is, and you figure out how that works, and then bingo, you stop performing in a role that you were conditioned to. You stop marching in the army of the lie, and you start marching in the army of the truth. In fact, I have to say you're not marching, you're dancing. You're dancing in the light rather than marching in the army. Yeah, yeah well, hence the saying, uh, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Well, I wonder what that would set you free from. There's another scripture that says, get out of her, my people, if you do not want to share with her in her sins. So, basically, what that's Saying in the land of incarnation, where we are not so free and we are bound by flesh and blood, we are also bound by salesmen and priests if we are so inclined to be uh, distracted by them, you know. <laughs> and, um, and, and this system of enslavement has always been known as Babylon the Great in all the scriptures, and in particular the Judeo-Christian scriptures, you know, Babylon the Great, Babylon will fall, Babylon the false empire of false religion. Well, it is. It's, it's materialism. That's all it is. And, um, and it's disempowering. So to get out of her, to know the truth, and to be set free is the most precious of all things. Now, Joe, I was just thinking about losing the name winning the game the other day and Kate you're on with us yeah I'm here with you now well how about this you know I mean uh, you've heard the expression soul to the devil haven't you oh yeah and it's it's a it's a true statement yes <laughs> it is absolutely true it is absolutely true and guess what all of humanity that has registered and has a birth or death certificate has done that very thing because the devil is none other than Babylon the Great, the system of corrupt government and so-called law and religion, etc. And guess what? They've signed everybody up, unbeknownst to them, they're um, sharing in that business. Oh yeah, that's selling your soul to the devil, I'd say, wouldn't you? Uh, just a little, <laughs> just a tad. Uh huh. Yep. When you, when, you, when you identify with a system that's not truthful, you're pulled into all the lies that come with that system. And we're here to give information that we really believe is going to set you free. And more than believe, we're witnessing it, setting ourselves and others free. I don't so. believe anything. You, I, I know it or I don't. Yes or yeah, no. Exactly. Black or white. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. First hand. First hand, when you uh, begin on the journey of uh, sovereignty and reclaiming dominion, uh, you're able to free yourself bit by bit and then see and then know. That's direct knowledge. So that's why uh, one who has walked the path can speak with authority. And Kate, uh, you were talking um, yesterday, we had our uh, show together and... Um, yeah. You were talking about that path that you walked, and you discussed some of the many experiences you've had. I mean, these experiences are what add to your knowledge, and then in the end you work out that uh, it's the name all along that has been incriminating us, uh, yep. because we, we've contracted uh, basically with the devil. I mean, they don't care for justice. They're, it's not like they're saying, hey, look, get into this con um, you know because we have no intent to commit fraud i mean this is equal and we're going to we're going to make sure of that i mean if that was so no one no one would be complaining would they no and that's the, you you hit the nail on the head really um, 
and, and it's not even so much that uh, that we've been walking around uh, committing fraud using someone else's property, but it really boils down to something. And I was talking to Mary Croft about this uh, in great detail, and it all boiled down to the intent to commit fraud before the papers were even slid across to the parent for registration. So there's the original sin. It was the intent to deceive the fraud and to enslave. And that is the, 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 the biggest dispelling of them all. That is the ring that rules them all. And right now, authorities across this planet, you know, the wannabe authorities, are absolutely shitting themselves because this truth is finally out. And uh, it's people like you and Jr. and and Cat Wolf and so many others. You know, uh, my station that I that I have my show TNS and Scottish Solves on the Land. All the hosts there, everyone uh, is pushing this information out. I mean, um, th there's the Denny K in a forum on David Ike's uh, um, website now. I mean, this is not going to stop because truth and Jr. made something else a little bit more apparent to me uh, based on one of the lines in my chart uh, there is not a barrier that can stop me absolutely now, uh, my mission was to come and save the world and 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 it I will what what can <laughs> stop you is nothing what can stop you is there are um, if you're isolated if you're isolated and then when you know yourself <laughs> you know that you are the entire universe and you are one and the same with the exactly. person of God. Exactly, we're all the one. Um, just <laughs> yeah, it has to do that, so I get that. This is a collective. This is, this is all the little um, sparks of the spark. Oh, it's perfect. Just to add to that point of intent, uh, Kate uh, and Joe, um, well, wouldn't intent be the difference between manslaughter and murder in court? Yes, and that's because... Uh, if you had a car I mean, accident, first you, degree, and, and go yeah, ahead. I mean, if you if you kill someone and you didn't mean to, well, that's manslaughter, right? Mm -hmm. But if you planned it, you know, weeks ahead and you got a hitman and everything like that, it's hard to turn up and say you didn't have in, intent in court. I mean, that's a big difference. There's a, a, a there's a different bail term, isn't there? Absolutely, there's a big difference, and discovering that makes all the difference in somebody's life if they're facing that challenge in court, yes. Intent, yep. intent that a, it actually means to ground as well. And, and, and when you ground something in physical reality, you make it manifest. And I'd just like to speak for a minute about spelling and words. See, when you take arbitrary symbols and you organize them according to your intent, that's what we call spelling. That's why they call it casting a spell. That's why people can be spellbound. You can be bound by a spelling. Think about this. That's why it's fun when Kate talks about they put you into a sentence. They sentence you to jail. They, they, they don't drag you to jail. They sentence you to jail. They put you into a sentence. So understanding intent, symbolism how words work, how sounds work, how vibrations work, and how they can imprison you is important. That's why this knowledge is important at so many levels, the legal level and the symbolic level and the physical level. So the spelling that's been put on the planet has been done by wordsmiths, by people who know how to use small print. And one of the things they did was they hid a lot of meaning in the word register. So register, when you register your birth certificate, you've already entered into a game that no one explained the rules. So the registering means to ray is the king, register. And you're like when you, when you assign this, when you report this chattel, this property to the king, you're saying, oh, one of your cows just had a little baby. You've got another calf. At the next rodeo, we can sell two more, you know. So we're just chattel we're just property literally property of the department of human resources and they put it right out there where you can see it just tune into any dot gov site you want and go to the department of human resources they think we are a resource they don't think that we're 
spirits. Yeah. They don't think no. that we're life that needs to be exaltated and loved and worshipped and adored. They think we're a resource to be consumed and managed. And, and Katie's finding out by unlocking their language because there's no barrier, including their language, that can prevent Katie from finding the truth and reporting it to us. Do I get an amen? <laughs> I'm just doing my Hallelujah. job. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so, Kate, uh, a couple of emails getting around that um, the authorities are a um, little bit They're scared, shitting. would you say? They're shitting hmm. themselves. They're tripping over themselves. This game is days to weeks to end. And we're going to avert all their nasty little fear stuff because while they're busy trying to put out all these little uh, uh, fires with what I've called Operation Wildfire, uh, no, 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 they're, they're going to be too busy trying to patch everything. It seems uh, all the dikes are leaking and this dam is coming down and that is one barrier that I am already through. I am a wedge of love. Get out of my way. Yeah, <laughs> hallelujah. I, I'll add my voice to that in okay. any possible way. Absolutely. And, well, you got the generator going on, too, so let's just double up, and then we have Super Generator Boy, JR, uh, and, and, and Cat Wolf, <laughs> and all the rest of them, and we're lining up the concert for the impact of a, of a universe. This is going to be something. Oh, can you feel it building? This is just a glorious time to be here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is our time. Yeah, nothing like a good idea when it's a right when it's when it's time comes. Absolutely, and so what I learned from watching your video, Santos, is that the sun and its orbit through the constellation is coming from below and getting ready to pierce through on the equinox of March twentieth and twenty first, as it rises permanently, affixing itself in a nice position within Aquarius. Is that correct? Yeah, we are now entering the days of Lent, and Lent is short for lengthening, you see. And um, along with Lent comes Pisces of uh, late February. All right, that's, so where, that's where the fish are eaten, you see. And then finally, when the sun crosses over that golden finish line of the 21st of March, um, and finally the sun has passed the point of equilibrium, equal day, equal night. From that point on, in the Northern Hemisphere, the days will be longer and the nights shorter, which equals food, photosynthesis, heat, warmth, love from the sun. You see, that's the sun, Christ Jesus, returning. That's the saviour, the one that saves us because there is no other body in the near which has so much vital force and love for humanity. That sun keeps pumping out protons and electrons and photons in the name of love to sustain us. We are sustained by the sun. That is the saviour. No one goes to the Father except through the sun. You see, all that beautiful science hiding there in poetry in the, uh, in the Gospels and people are missing it because they see it as, well, like you said before, spells on paper. Absolutely. And as we go from Pisces in the calendar year, we also go from the Piscean age into the Aquarian year in terms of 2012. Is that correct, too? Yeah, this is the last Pisces, the one coming up in February. It's the last month of Pisces in the last... Um, in the last of the 2,000 year reign of Pisces because Pisces ends officially at the end of this year um, Aquarius began 50 years ago in 1962 there's been a 50 year cusp you see and uh, we're going to say goodbye to Pisces on the 21st of December 2012 forever whether that is astronomically accurate or not regardless um, you know that the, the time slot of Pisces has certainly done its dash. And um, even though not all astronomers out there and astrologers agree, uh, but there are quite a few who, um, who do see that uh, the end of this year is the end because it's the galactic alignment. So uh, let's celebrate the last of the last of Pisces in Pisces, eh? Because the next Pisces will be in Aquarius. 
And that's going to be quite trippy. And so as we go in towards Aquarius, I've been telling my friends, if you have a friend who's an Aquarian or has the Aquarius sun sign in their birth chart, you know how crazy those people can be and how hard they are to figure out and how you can't pin them down. You can't draw a conclusion. They're going to find a creative way to surprise you. So that's how I'm approaching the future. I'm not even trying to understand it. I'm just going to let it fill me full of surprises and beautiful awakenings and awarenesses and enjoy the, the craziness of the Aquarian age. Is, is that in alignment with what Aquarian qualities are? Um, yeah, look, Aquarian qualities are very mental, mental qualities. Uh, so we are being elevated, hu uh, humanity is being elevated mentally. And of course, the universe is mental. Uh, that's the Hermetic Maxim, one of the first, uh, one of the seven principles of Hermes. So if we are going into a mental sign, you see, we've been in an emotional sign uh, and, and a very emotional sign. Pis Pisces, whoa. I mean, Pisces is all about emotion, you know, and, and uh, suffering in it, individualism, it has um, all the things that we've seen. We've been in the pain of the Piscean age, you know, we've, we've experienced it firsthand. Mutable signs can do that, and Aquarius is a fixed sign, fixed air. And of course, Aquarius corresponds to January. We're in January. Uh, we're in February at the moment, but we're still in um, the latter portion of Aquarius. But Aquarius is associated with January. January is Janus. Janus is John. John the Baptist. It is a baptizing sign, and it baptizes people with waters of truth in the mind. So uh, be prepared for um, great expansion in the mental area in terms of humanity my goodness we're going for a great little ride no need to um to panic uh but preparation of course is um uh necessary for to facilitate the change i mean you know uh we're going to be born again that's for sure um uh, but you know as a baby as a child in the womb does not panic and do much to uh you know affect the passage into the real world, well, that's what we need to bear in mind, that um, our passage into the next place, however it comes, is already taken care of for us, and we're, we're in good hands. So we're in good can hands. I just, can I just interrupt for one second? Seamus missed your explanation of the extended word for Lent. Could you explain to Seamus what Lent is short for again, please, Santo? Sorry for the interruption. Ah, yes. <clears throat> well, Lent is short for lengthen. And right now, in the Northern Hemisphere, the sun is climbing up the mountain to the Tropic of uh, Cancer to bring back the photosynthesis and feed everybody, you see, the saviour. But first he has to lengthen his rays. And um, because he's just come from the, uh, the winter solstice, the 21st of December, that was only a few, you know, a handful of weeks ago, uh, that was the shortest day of the year. So from Capricorn to Aries, from the goat to the sheep, uh, the sun is lengthening its rays. You see, the sheep and the goats. And when the sun reaches the sheep, the lamb, the lamb of God, well, guess what? Christians and Jews are celebrating the Passover because the sun, lengthening and lengthening and lengthening, finally it reaches the point of equilibrium. It passes over the, equ the equator, the uh, equinox, and hallelujah, we go and celebrate Easter. The Jews celebrate the Passover. We all revel in the, the celebration of the fact that God now is... Um, being killed, of course, the sun sacrifices the sacrificial lamb as it goes through March and April, killing the lamb and shedding the blood of the lamb to redeem us, to give us another year of food. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful religion. It's a beautiful religion. It's based on cycles. Simple as that. Nothing else. Anyone who believes anything different has been misled. 
It's, you know, I mean, Jesus is, is no more real than Santa Claus and Humpty Dumpty. Um, but they are philosophically real, you see. Not historically, philosophically very yeah, real. So perspective. You're so right, Santo. I love listening to you guys just go. So uh, if I'm not saying much, just let you know that, that I'm just sitting back here, flowing the energy for you guys and uh, energize. You've got a throat, Santo, and I know I'm... I'm just going to take it, you take it, and I'm just going to flow everything I've got right into you, so just knock them dead, guys, just knock them dead. Yeah, you know, um, the sad thing about the Christian historical story is it diverts people from the true Christ within. We are all Christ-like. Christ means light, and everything is light. We are produced by light. And that's what God is. So if there's anyone out there who, who, who staunchly believes they're atheists, well, if that means that you are against the theist God, that's fine. But if that means that you're saying that there is no God, well, then you're denying light because that's, what, that's all that God is. The scriptures tell it clearly. God is light. Not God comes to us through light or God sometimes manifests as light, or God uses light. No, God is light, and we can't deny light. It's the ubiquitous substance of the universe. It's the maker of all forms. And so we acknowledge our big brother in the sky who has come close. You know, all those other stars out there, we see them in the in the um, in the starlit dome at night, but they all keep their distance. But this one star, this Jesus Christ, Michael, the Saviour, is always near. You know, in the daytime, Aratus, in his famous poem, 300 years B BCE, in the Phenomena, said, called the sun. I think seven times I've underlined it in my poem. You know, I like to underline my books sacrilegiously. Uh, <laughs> Um, but he calls the sun the god of day. There's, there's no mistake in the ancient mind of all people of ancient times, the sun was the god of day. And there's a description of Ecclesiastes 11.7 that says, it is good for the eye of man to see the sun. And then Malachi 4.2 that says, the last, virtually the very, very last chapter in the Old Testament. Read it, and there it says in Malachi 4.2 that the sun will come, the sun of righteousness, S-U-N by the way, with healing in its wings. It was known back then that if you, if you stared at the sun, uh, they, they gazed at the sun intently in the morning and in the evenings because those rays those soft particle electron rays that reach your eye are able to glean electric energy from those photons and it goes straight through the nervous system into the brain which is an electromagnetic computer electrochemical computer and it needs electricity which comes through the eyes by staring at the sun it is electric Everything is light and electricity. So our bodies, being electric, they require electric <coughs> energy to be charged, it, to be recharged. You see, people are getting around and they're so flat, you know. You look at people and they look flat and they are flat. And you ask them, what's the matter? Oh, I feel just, I just feel so flat. I'm so exhausted. Well, why? Well, that's because it, there's only one reason for that. That means you're cut, cutting yourself off from God, which is the electric supply of light which comes from the sun. When you cut yourself off from God, you, you begin to degenerate and die. So solar gazing, uh, herbs, herbs have alkaline electric properties, and um, walking on dirt, believe it or not, walking on dirt as we were designed to do are the three most... Um, efficient ways of electrical charge in the body. And when you have electrical charge in the body restored, there's no such thing as arthritis and, uh, and um, you know, asthma and things like that. Those words, I mean, you just, you never rec you'll never recognize them. They, they don't exist. 
They've never existed for me. I grew up walking on dirt on the farm. I was a wild little boy, a country boy, on a tobacco farm up in uh, the Victorian Alps. Um, and um, so I charged my body for life. <laughs> I have a charge that will remain with me for life because I walked on dirt and stones and all of that stuff, uh, thistles, etc. My feet were like horses' hooves. Um, and when you do that, you charge your body with, a, with an electric charge that never leaves the body. It never betrays. That is God. And I urge people to have a look at um, the latest coast-to-coast -coast interview with M Morris talking about how uh, astrology works and how photons and everything and electric charge and everything like that works and how everything is uh, made by the, um, by the process of light and electricity. Please have a listen. He's just such a brilliant man, and he's uh, got such exquisite thoughts about metaphysics, etc. Who do we type it. in for that information, Santos, in our browser? Who would we type in to find that? Uh, Maurice Cotterell. Cottrell. I, I tend to pronounce it Cottrell, but uh, the guy on uh, Coast to Coast that interviewed him pronounces it Cotterell. C-O-T-T-E-R-E-L-L, -L -L, the future science guy? Yeah, yeah. Um, between, look, there's guys, there's, there's that guy, uh, Maurice Cottrell, there's John Lamb Lash, the uh, Wall Thornhill from um, uh, Thunderbolts Project. These guys are, are scientists. They are scientists. Graham Hancock and Robert Bouval, uh, Robert Schock, John Anthony West. These are scientists that are coming out and, um, you know, they've turned their back on consensus rubbish that is being taught in the institutions. And they're being honest. They're living in honour and teaching the truth. Well, we are all involved in teaching the truth, and I really appreciate you bringing those guys to our attention. The more that we bounce around that light of truth within ourselves, and the more we listen to things, that's a mirroring of the process of the sunlight you were describing. You know, God comes to us in truth, and it bounces in our head, and the next thing we know... We are expanding our knowledge and we're growing, and that's how flowers grow. Flowers grow towards the sun because the magnetic influence is pulling them upwards. And I used to think it was because they were growing towards the light, and I found out, oh, the light is just a production of that magnetic force. We can see it. And then I started studying physics and started realizing, oh, well, if I don't feed back into the system that I'm a part of, then how will that system know what I see? So I started reflecting the light and reflecting the knowledge. And as soon as I saw your knowledge, I beamed it into other people and I reflected that wisdom to them. And then, you know, you saw the knowledge that the charts brings and you reflected that into the system. And Katie saw the, the knowledge of the words. So we're all magnifying the beam that we're traveling in together. And yeah. That, is that and, one and thing? Look, Oh, yeah. And look, um, Joe, uh, great thoughts. And I'm thinking to myself while you're speaking, how obvious it is if we have been produced light effects in the physical realm, that um, if those photons are free to travel wherever they wish in the universe, in fact, when you turn, turn your head upwards and you stare at the, su the stars at night, some of the photons coming from those stars have been travelling for eons and eons and eons of time. Little photons, you know, just these little charged particles that are just flying free through the heavens and finally, bang, they land on, the pu on your pupil, pupil. And guess what? They don't stop. They keep going. They go straight through your pu pupil and just they, they leave a little bit of their charge behind and they just keep going, man. These guys, they're so free. And we're made up of this. And we come into this on this planet and we find this, uh, this um, bunch of guys that uh, sit in their little offices and issue their papers and, and um, tell you to put your name on those papers. I mean, how dare we offend the sun and Saturn? 
Saturn and, and Mars and the Earth and Venus, Mercury and the Moon by pretending that we are a name, reducing ourselves to a name, a capitalized one, on a bit of paper and letting that unconscious bit of paper dictate everything we do thereafter. Oh, I want a mortgage. Oh, I'll use that name. Oh, I've got to go into court and I'm going to uh, use the equity that I've got in that name. And how dare we sell our souls to the devil, so to speak, and then go and interact and contract with these bastards when the photons that are carrying us are telling us, contrary to this, hey, idiot, you're free. And do, you want to, and do you want to continue to be free like the rest of the photons that are cruising around through the whole universe wherever they will? Or do you want to stay here in the body? Because the more you believe in their system and their entanglements and love the world that is passing away, like Narcissus, oh yeah, he loved himself. Mm -mm, I'm so gorgeous. I'm going to go down there and get me some of that. Absolutely, and when Narcissus looked at his reflection on the water, he became enchanted and entranced. And that's what's happened with our consciousness. We've all become enchanted and entranced with what we perceive is reality. And we spend our waking days looking through our two eyeballs at the outer world, and we think, oh, what a lovely reflection. I'll just keep staring at it. And it's okay, because if you're a human, you're going to be involved in that. But sooner or later, you've got to get away from your own reflection and go wander around inside yourself, not the reflected self. And that's what, hopefully, the chart does. And that's what, hopefully, the right that Kate does is an outer expression of that process. You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to stop using this name. I'm going to stop using this illusion, this falsehood. So, na'e means negation of the anime, negation of the spirit. And that's why a name is bad, because it negates you from identifying with your inner spirit, your true self, and you start to identify with this name that was registered at birth on you. So, yeah, well, like, like when, you, when you go to prison, uh, you know, you get to learn a new name. It's called a number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and names and numbers, names and numbers, and you start to forget your friends outside, and you start yeah, to forget look, your mum. Yeah, look at the father. word though. Look at the word numbers. <laughs> Not numbers, numbers. So they're taking you down even further. They're numbing you even further. So it, it's it, it is a joke now. Honestly, I got to tell you. Oh, and here's something I'm going to offer out to uh, any any. Uh, uh, crown officers, uh, cops or whatever, if you would like, I will help you uh, get rid of your mortgage. I would love to set you free so you could see it for yourself and set you free of all the debt that was placed upon you. And uh, I would love to help you and your family if, you, uh, I I if that's your wish. I'm here. Um, please contact me. My, um, my information is for all uh, and, and for you guys especially because we need to bring you home. We love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. we, want the, we want the governing parts of us to transcend and, and evolve, too. We don't want to smite them and destroy them. We want to evolve them. So I look at the metaphor that I've learned from you, Santos, that if we're going into the mental part of the zodiac, if the sun is going to travel into an Aquarian age, well, it makes sense to me that we're going to become smart. We're going to become uh, aware of the knowledge that, that sets us free and that's helped me to neutralize emotionally and not be so upset over the system and so I better forgive those people that duped me and numbed me and named me and I better find a way to read the rule book and if I can understand the symbols and the words and the letters and the the right the activity of right the actions that they're taking then once that understanding starts to settle into me, I then can play the game from both sides of the rule book, and I can go from the outside to the inside. I can master the game, so to speak. So I've been enjoying learning and sharing the things that the game is about, uh, not so much from a point of anger anymore, but from a point of going, you know, 
I see what you're up to. Okay, well, then you know what? If you can register me, then I can unregister me. I can un anything. I can in, un, on, uh, uh. And I started using my voice. And I started using my voice that's connected to my intellect. That's one tool for awareness and freedom. The other tool is for using the voice that I've discovered is within me, which is the uh-huh and the uh-uh. And I learned to find that voice by looking at the charts. And then I'm applying what the charts are teaching me to what Cat is teaching me through the legal system that Cat's bringing up. So we have a outer metaphor or an outer representation of what the inner process is going through. So if Kate has found a way to break through the barrier of the legal system and start to unlock the spell-binding contracts that bonded us to the bondage of the bonds being traded for dollars at the Federal Reserve level and increase our awareness of sovereignty, then I'm starting to feel comfortable and happy that I'll be awakening at other levels in my body and in my awareness. And I'm really encouraged by hearing what's going on. So to that end, I'd like to hear from both of you guys and, and Kat Wolf, if Kat's still there, what is happening on the frontier of the legal system and the efforts that Kate's taken? Because then I'll know you expect something like that on the inside real soon. Oh, it's already happening. I mean, I just got an email from uh, Mary Croft. Uh, she's forwarded it around. And uh, the F FBI just came out and said that all Americans are, are dangerous or something. It's like they messed up. I, and that's the thing. When we put this energy out there, uh, it becomes the, the, the tripping force. And the, the bare bones truth, the absolute core of this deception was the intent to commit fraud in the first place by getting people duped into thinking they had to register. And I, I do want to clarify that word. Regis and stir are two different words that have been uh, joined together. And regis means to rule. Stir, any word with stir in it is the creative feminine essence, spirit, literally. So what they... What, we, register anything you have given away the divine right for someone else to rule your creation your creativity your very creative void essence which is your feminine you are both masculine and feminine some of us um, from the ether I know from my own self essence I, I am feminine uh, that was my eternal choice and that's why um, I know who I am and why it, it fought so hard to surface uh, because I, I could not hold me back. That's the purest part of me. Whereas others uh, on the masculine side are more intent on being that intention. And it has to be equal in balance in order to have creation at all. Singular intention of, of the masculine electrical energy into the creative feminine void, the magnetic where creation shall take place. It's just the masculine electrical has overcharged and um, has really, really messed shit up. Anyway, we're here to fix it. I'm here to love and help. And, and uh, yeah, please come to the void and, and enjoy your, your next creation. And it's going to be quite something. So, yeah, go. and and as we, we go and... Um, continue awakening there's more that we need to learn too so as we embrace that and make changes in our lives and show people how one can live free and as a sovereign well then the filters down and um, and that's the aim is to for it to filter down to everybody <laughs> not just you know not just a select few or just everybody and the elites everyone's welcome everyone is welcome to accept freedom you know uh, the the system thickened to have everybody registered and, and, and taxed and checked and uh, numbered and whatever else. That's gone. That's gone. It's limited. It's, it was awful. It's, it's disgusting and vomitous. And it's, it's over. It, it's part and parcel of Pisces. It's part and parcel of the Iron Age. It's part and parcel of our forgetfulness. It's a sign that we forgot our God. Therefore, we were punished in the... In, basically, it's, you know, 
uh, it's as above so below and it's as things should be I mean the world is the way it is because that's what um, you know that's what we've allowed and that's what we've inherited and we haven't really done much to change it now we realize our power of co-creatorship um, we're going to bend a few things and tweak a few things here and there and make things better because that's how it starts you start with you know the individual you starts with you you make the changes and filters down so I have a question then that, that sounds good I, I like hearing that I have a question before I ask it is, uh, did I just interrupt somebody wanted to say something you you said um, that you would like me to respond also so shall no, please I? do please do I mean to answer you there Joseph as it were uh, within the legal system you said what well, what do we think is happening or how do we feel uh, things are, you know, changing, manifesting, transforming within the legal system. We know the system is sewers. It, it stems from the word sewers. So if, if you leave the lid off of sewers for even a few minutes, everybody around gets a whiff of that smell, right? <laughs> so we're kind of getting a whiff of that smell right now. Uh, well, we're actually kind of in the sewers with them because you know some you know dirty job but some of us have got to do it but you know we're carrying the smell of the sewers wherever we go and if, you know ladies out there who like their perfume I'm sorry about this explanation but that's what I feel because I feel the energies stick to us uh, so you know what is happening and as, as Kate said there about stir being feminine um, there are feminine energies being stirred in all of us okay you you find that the the blokes that were geezers um, are becoming a little bit more effeminate in their ways uh, there's a gentle essence um, oozing from those who think of themselves as male now uh, is something I've noticed so with with um, the stench from the sewers um, kind of clinging to all of the female uh, we, we really are stirring the female energies up so um, you know I feel also that all of the fear mongering all of the fear that they have put out false evidence appearing real however you want to pronounce it whatever acronym but all that they've been giving out is coming back to them so you know as my grandfather said what goes around comes around right karma whatever and when the mother is calm all becomes calm and when there is so much stress and that the whirlwind and, and the tornado are flowing in the commercial world people kind of get a grip of our calm and even though there's such angry and horrible things that could be spoken about we say them with such calm so I think that that is also very important as to the karma and and what's going back and uh, you know I think we all know that they they work with astrology themselves and geometry and all of this stuff and they know it's written in the stars it's the writ it's the right if you like they know it's there change is they know it they they knew it long before we did so you know they're going to trump up a lot more fear-mongering ways right now i think is what they're going to do in their desperation um so you're going to be getting a lot more uh, of their ucc commercial codes whatever um clamping down on people and you know as kate said there all americans now are enemies well we've got to see what american is that's the corporation so if you agree that you're american or australian or or uh, canadian or English or whatever it might be it's a falsity also you are you and you walk on the land that was provided by Mother Earth for you and also they know that people are seeing through this um, Admiralty law because you know it's it's as silly as saying that man made any law you know let alone the law of the sea it, it's ridiculous you know people can see that we're not flooded I know the towns and cities must be flooded according to them so that they can rebuild okay so they, they can see that we're busting through their words and that's where their main source of power is their, their spells so we're, we're spelling right back so uh, there's my answer I'll stop waffling now but uh, yes over to you guys hope that was a good enough oh, answer look at the power up look at the, look at the lineup in, in, in the spoken now everyone is singing the same universe beautiful God honestly oh we you you me we're going out and we're going to get pampered and 
and, uh, and spa, baby. <laughs> I'm with you, sister. I'm with you there. <laughs> Definitely. And by the way, by the way, guys, tonight. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm getting some good video footage here of uh, the beautiful Kate herself and the very handsome Joseph. Yes. Well, thank you very much. And we had a lovely usual picture of uh, the gorgeous Santo also. So, yes, uh, a trio of merry beauties in front of me, I think, in their own way. Right. Well, you now you can just confirm to everybody that I am real. and. Oh, absolutely, yes. Very, very, very all, real. All Larger accepting. than life, I'm seeing here. <laughs> fine is a good word, too. Fine would be a good word. Yes, oh, mighty thanks. fine. I think in England they say fit. Fit. Oh, yes. fit. You haven't even seen my legs. <laughs> in the United States, they might even call it bodacious. Well, we, we oh. could say a lot of things, but um, uh, are any children listening? <laughs> 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 exactly, you see? So, yes, you can't see that. Shame we haven't got a video thing going there. <laughs> Maybe we're oh, going to yeah. do this on YouTube. <laughs> anytime, anytime. Well, well, then, as I accumulate all the words that I hear from all of y'all coming in to respond and land in my ears and go into my brain what i'm getting a picture of very clearly that i'd like to report back is it's very much like uh, the united states in 1865 when they emancipated the slaves when sl when freedom first came around people were like well what is it what do we do we don't even know and here were all these people who were former slaves they were used to living in the master's system where all of the Fruits of their labor went to somebody else. And they just got a little portion of food back in their bowl and had to live in the barn with the animals. And then the, somebody came up and said, hey, we're going to proclaim emancipation and free you. Well, they didn't have any knowledge of what to do. They'd been locked in this bondage of ignorance. And they had an awareness there must be something else out there. But, you know, if you grew up in the system of slavery in the United States and South Carolina or North Carolina or Georgia, you didn't even know what lied on the other side of the Mississippi. You didn't know what a free man's life could be like. So all of a sudden the system changed and these people poured out and this population was walking around and we went from slavery to segregation for a while and finally those people worked themselves into political recognition and they took their rights and they got the right to vote and all that stuff. So I see us in a similar system now where we were intellectual slaves and economic slaves and we're going to free ourselves. And the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to wander around for a little while going, well, what do we do and how, how does this freedom operate? So I'm just wondering if you see us at the same stages of that process. Or is that the stage that you see it or do your perspectives reflect back other information as i hear your reflections from your perspectives my knowledge will increase its awareness and i welcome your response uh kate uh cat yeah. and, and santa so let's go ladies first and start with cat wolf maybe if that's okay yeah that's wonderful my view is it can never be the same as it was change is inevitable um, we move forward. That's why, you know, when people say, oh, the politicians are here just to stick, keep the status quo is a lie in itself because the status quo cannot be kept because there's constant movement. Even when somebody's meditating, sitting down, they may seem externally to be doing nothing, but the inner energies and, and muscles and whatever else are, are working like crazy. So I think in short, we can never be where they were because uh, our third eye has opened and much more hence them wanting us to get a lot of milk down our neck let alone the glue substances and whatever else have you in the milk I won't even go into the mastitis uh, pus that would be in there and stuff <laughs> hope you enjoy it on your uh, ready break in the morning or whatever you're eating um, but yes I, I think you know they're a mishmash now whereas before they they were a lot more confident these these are the ones that the powers that were that I'm, I'm speaking of now they were a lot more con confident that much more easier to be confident you know confidence tricksters uh, and that's all it is that's all confidence is that's all they are con men so i think no we're we're way ahead 
um, of, of anything that can ever be conceived, even by ones that say they're awake. And if I can say this to anybody who actually thinks they're awake, I think you need to think again, because we're all learning something every single day, be it a new word, you know, a new symbol, a new sign. And this is something that the powers that were do not have the capability and capacity to do, because they're not allowed to they're forbidden it's forbidden you go by their rules and they have their deadlines and this is your education and you will go no further because we do not want you to so they're also limited in in where they can go so i think we uh, as as in the we the we the the one the wholeness it, it can never be as it were it is so far advanced it's it's miraculous marvelous and you know it shows me what smile is which is small miracles in little events so that's what's happening every day which is not happening with them so that's my view <laughs> beautiful small miracle yeah yeah um i'll be really short and sweet on this one uh, a lot of people w when we talk about the the system crashing everyone's thinking what will i do without money um, allow me to be your mirror. What will I do without all this debt and everything I already have? <laughs> oh my God! Wait a minute. Turn it in the mirror, guys. They've got you looking in all the wrong directions. 180 about face. Okay, so now that you go uh, take it from the. But I won't have any money. I won't be able to buy. <laughs> you won't have any debt either. And guess what? Everyone's in the same boat. Start rowing. It's okay. We'll be fine. We had. I just want to give one example, and then we're going to throw this over to Santo because I know he's got uber passions on this, and he's Italian Stalin. People are going to start. <laughs> actually, yeah, I have to say that Santo, uh, uh, Santo popped my cherry uh, uh -oh. with the day. Okay, he did. He, he did me <laughs> first. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, you're beautiful. You so. You yeah. We had a little chat last night. It was nice to see each other again. It's been a very long time. And uh, um, that's a very real thing for me. I know, I, I know my souls, and I know those that I have gathered with, the ancients and the wise and the, and the loving, uh, the wisest and brightest of all. And I'm so, so honored to be here serving in the capacity as servant. Um, in 2003, we had a blackout here in North America, and uh, like huge swaths of, of land went without power. Uh, it was a test. I know it was the system testing us. Um, and, they, and the system failed miserably because uh, the, the calm and the peace of no electrical energy around from the 60 cycles and the TVs and all the rest of it, there was this glorious lifting of be beauteous joy. And you could see the stars. And, and of course, you know, I had a my barbecue, so I could still cook, and I've got, I, I, can, I can make a fire, and uh, I had a freezer full of food, and I spent four days feeding as many people as I could so it wouldn't go bad, but again, it's about, it, what this is all about is about options, and listen, you know, the world, the world as you know, it ends tomorrow, You're not, you don't end tomorrow, that's where you begin, and this is where we get to be part of a family that I have witnessed with my own eyes and experienced complete strangers stepping into in intersections and directing traffic. And Sue was up and uh, working in Mississauga at the time, and she had to drive to Oakville. She got home faster uh, that day when the power all went out than any other day she never drove without <laughs> any traffic lights, without any, you know, and there were no accidents. Everything just went into this beautiful space of peace, and I know the system, the powers that were, were going, oh, shit. Oh, I thought they were going to riot. Damn it, turn the power back on. Anyway, um, <laughs> that way they get the harp and the radio frequencies and the rest of it. So anyway, there's my vision of tomorrow. Uh, we get the chance to wipe out everything that you ever thought was debt, and we get to start like that fresh 16-year-old for the very first time striking out on their own. And, oh, look at, all, look at all the halls that are empty that people will just move into. Look at all the, I mean, there are far more, there are far more homes and places to be and live and, and far more food than you could ever imagine. There is not going to be a problem. Electrical workers will go back to work because they want they want power for their for their homes, for their own families. So we're all going to we're all going to be helping everybody out. When the when the money collapses, this is this is what has to go. The evil that money is, and it is the root of all evil. Any form of exchange is evil, because the only thing that will work are the gifts. Singular intention to exponential creation. 
Anyway, go ahead, Santo. That's just my feeling. I see a beautiful world. Beautiful yep. from here. Yeah, because we're going from debtor to creditor. Uh, there's two types of people out there, creditors and debtors. And uh, we've been put into de debt by default. You know, we just walked into the world, got a name, check, check in here and check out over the other end, basically. <laughs> That's how they do it. It's like, you know, the job system. Check in at... Nine to five o'clock, do your nine to fivers. You know, that's your occupation. What's your occupation? You know, indicates probably that there's an occupation going on somewhere, isn't there? You know, well, martial law, well, police okay. state. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, everything's at war. Look, uh, guys, what I, what I know is this. As Aquarius comes, Aquarius's motto is, I know. Aha. Uh -huh. There you go. Know the truth. Know yourself. Know who you are. That's what Aquarius is all about. And guess what Pisces was all about? Doubt and belief. Not knowing. Doubt and belief. The first fish is I doubt. The second fish closest to Aquarius is I believe. We've gone from, from Aries. Aries was very arrogantly confident and his, his motto was I am. Guys, what yeah. I, I know is this. As Aquarius comes, Aquarius's motto is I know. Uh -huh. Oops, what's happened? That's okay. Uh, space Dancer, turn your radio off. You have to turn it off. You'll hear the show from here. <laughs> yeah, you could just press pause on the player, Space Dancer. That would be wonderful. And just to introduce you lovely people to a lovely one called Space Dancer. Um, we do have the washing machine going around at the Long moment. Um, Aries. Aries. Very, very confident. Hello and welcome, Space Dancer. Hi there, can you hear me? Can you Hello. Hear Hello, beautiful. You have to turn your radio off. You have to turn your radio off. It's okay. Uh, Space Dancer, turn your radio off. You have to... Off. You'll hear the stuff from here. Okay, how do I do that? Just hit go pause on. on the player or close the page. Close. There you okay. go. Gotcha. There, now we're now we're yeah, live. <laughs> now we can hear a beautiful velvety tones. Over to you guys and welcome to you, Space Dancer. You still hear me okay? Yeah, yes. of course, you're on, you're on with us. That's why we need you to turn the radio off so that you can actually join us and hear the show live over Skype because you're in, you're in the show. Right. <laughs> there you go. We see nice. your beautiful oh, vision. Show. Great show, oh. exactly. I, I was just listening to JR earlier, and um, I did my chart, and I'm, a, I'm one of those projectors, so I'm going to get to talk to him hopefully soon. Absolutely. Yep. When this show's over, we'll be, we'll be able to message on Skype. Awesome. But this is really fantastic, all this, all, all, everything we've been talking about, it's, it's so amazing to be a part of this. It's, it's just, um, I love it. We love you being here. We really appreciate you uh, tuning in right now. And we really appreciate that you have persevered a lot of stuff just to be here on planet Earth at this time. And you probably could organize us really well because you could probably see not just how to make this conversation go better, but how to make life be better for a lot of people that you see. Please share some insight with us and tell us what's on your mind. Okay, um, a couple of things. Um, I've had quite a few um, visions and things to share with people lately, and one of them is um, um, I had a dream about um, like an angel. I didn't know it was an angel, but it was a being that came to me, and um, said to me one day, um, have, you, um, have you ever heard of blue light and love? I mean, because I was always saying light and love to people, and, and, and she said to me, blue light and love, and I said, well, no, I've never heard that, but she said, I want to show you something because, because um, it's much more powerful than you believe that it is and that you know that it is, and so I'm going to take you and show you some things, and I said, okay. So what happened was I was taken, to, I was taken and I saw this man sitting on the ground in the lowest position, you know, he was meditating. But he had this darkness all over him. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. Why are you showing me this man? And they said, well, because he's very dark. And um, I said, well, what am I supposed to do? And, and um, this, this angelic being said to me, 
put blue light and love around this man five feet out in all directions and see what happens. And I said, okay. So I, I, said, I, so I, I said, I surround this man with blue light and love five feet out in all directions. And, um, and then uh, immediately this man was, because he's surrounded with love now and he's dark. I mean, he's got, he thinks evil thoughts and he has, he has hate in his heart and he has all these bad thoughts. And so all of a sudden he starts cringing and fighting it because now he's got love surrounding him and he doesn't know what to do with that because, because he's very dark. And I said, well, what's going to happen to this man? And I, was, and I was told he will either change or he will die because that's one of the things that, that you know, a, a, someone who's dark can't stay in the light and, you know, stay in love. And I said, okay. And so then um, this angel said to me, let's go. I want to show you someone else. And I said, okay. So um, I followed her and I, I, there was a man sitting in a chair. And this man had dark spots on him, but he, you could see light beams coming out from the dark spots, but there were still dark spots coming in. And I was told, do the same thing you did before, put blue light and love around him. So I said, okay. And so I surrounded this man with blue light and love, five feet out in all directions. And all of a sudden, immediately, all the dark, blotchy black spots started flying off of him, and he started smiling. You see, he was really happy. And I said, oh, I said, wow, I, I, I never knew. And... And, and she said, well, that's great. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm done with this. And so, um, and so the angel says, no, there's one more person I need to take you to. And I said, well, well, I can't think of anybody else that needs anything besides this very dark man and this one that was oppressed. And uh, so anyway, she goes, come on. And so I followed her, and I, I, I saw a man standing with his hands in the air, like he was, you know, praising God, or just, you know, and, and had a glow on his face, love flowing all out of him, pure light, and I'm thinking, what does this man possibly need? And um, so I was told, put the blue light and love around this man too. So I said, okay. So I, I surrounded him with blue light and love, and I released it to the universe, and all of a sudden, I saw these waves of energy and power just pouring into this man, and I said, whoa, what is this? And, um, and so I was told, I said, well, you know, he had love and, and he had peace, but what he needed was power. And what I've shown you, I want you to show the world because, because everyone needs to be empowered with, you know, with this extra energy that's out there for us because we've walked in love, but we've never learned how to walk in power. And I said, okay, and I said, but I was also told there's a warning that goes with this. If you share this with people, please tell them that they cannot use blue light and love on anyone unless they, they are, unless they have forgiveness in their heart and they don't do it with any kind of anger or animosity. So in other words, you're not trying to get revenge when you do something like that. But that I wanted to share with you guys because um, to me that is, and we have done this and we have seen people change. We have seen um, Major miracles happened to people. I had this lady that didn't like me. <laughs> she decided she didn't like me. And so she started trying to turn all the people that I knew against me. And right after that, well, it, this went on for six months. And um, when I was shown this blue light and love thing, my friend says to me, why don't we try this blue light and love thing on this gal? And I said, oh, okay. So we did. We surrounded her with blue light and love and released it. Three weeks later, I saw her in a meeting. And she followed me out to my car and came over to me and she said, Sandy, she said, you're one of the most beautiful spirits I've ever seen or known in my life. She said, all you do is walk in love and I just want you to know that I love you dearly. And, um, and she gave me this really big hug and, and turned and walked away. And I'm, I'm, I was in shock. I mean, because this woman couldn't stand me. And um, we had, all we had done was surround her through that love. And that energy changed her. So that's what I want to share with you guys. Thank you. That was very powerful for me to hear. Just wow. Um, I'm Joseph, and Joseph is the interpreter of dreams and the icons of parables and allegories. And I really love thinking about all the things you just said on so many levels. And it just was beautiful to hear that story. I'm just curious, would anybody like me to share a... Um, reflection about what I heard. Please. Well, I love the message of the Blu-ray, and um, what I'd like to show is how it's congruent to what's happening now. In the 60s, when the dawning of the age of Aquarius started, we were in the dawn. And in the 60s, where I was born, 
they actually sang a song, This is the Dawning, <laughs> so we would know. <laughs> and now we're really moving into Aquarius. Well, anybody that wakes up in the morning and follows Santos' advice to look in the sun and let the magnetics heal you or look at the sunset knows that you look at the sun in the morning and at sunset because there's no ultraviolet light, there's no blue ray. And you can handle sun gazing in the morning. And I've thought about all this Blu-ray stuff people are talking about. And I had a friend who told me to, you know, do the violet light and the blue light. And now it makes sense on another level after hearing the story. So I'll conclude my connection and say, I went, oh, you know, I just learned how to stare into the sun recently. I just learned how to really open and allow that light to come into me. How beautiful when I let that light come in. And, um... I'm not scared of the light, but I know that the ultra blue light is harmful to my eyes on a certain level, so I'm just going to stick with the other light. And I thought about how your story helped our consciousness to see that, hey, y'all, the blue light's a coming. <laughs> the blue light's going to come because after the dawn, the short wave form, the short light is the blue light. It's a short wavelength. It's called ultraviolet light. And the blue and the violet light frequencies, which are beyond our natural abilities to see are coming in to view the sun of the solar system is is not just dawning it is getting ready to have the blue light join the other colors of the rainbow in the ray that's coming to the earth and we're going to get used to the blue light well you know some people were scared of the blue light and they had to have ultraviolet protection and sunblock and you know we know the ultraviolet light on a physical level, might be harmful at some level. So we, you know, we're starting to learn about the principles of light and the blue rays. Well, metaphysicians and people like yourself who've been enjoying these visions and then following through have seen that when you add the blue light, the blue beam of consciousness from your consciousness to the world, it goes into the world. You're, you're actually part of the dawn of consciousness. And so, so you're the beginning of the blue ray. And behind you and your information in your life is the beam that those following us will be fully integrated and they're born into a reality where that blue light's present. So the human genetics had to have a receptor in it for that light already there when the light showed up. And we do. And hearing your story makes me remember the blue light of the upper chakras and the blue of the throat of expression. And it makes me think of the blues that we listen to on the radio. And, you know, those, those things have a quality that I'm really starting to appreciate at a whole other level because as Joseph, the interpreter of dreams, your dream tells me that a light is going to shine on the dark men in the darkness. And it's going to shine on those who had some light but just needed power because that ray is going to empower their thought processes so that their intellect can become aware of the soul, make friends, and begin the process of looking within. So there is going to be a connection because of that blue ray. And then the man of love that you described at the end and, and all the rest of the dream to me, it makes it easy to see metaphors. You don't have to be a Joseph, the dream interpreter, to hear that in your story we're being delivered information that the blue beam's coming and it does beautiful things. Those who want to emulate it and share and bounce that beam can, and those who are open to receive it are just going to keep opening. So I think of the blue beam as the opener. And uh, it's opening us to a higher key. And if you've ever danced to the blues, you know you can't keep your feet in your shoes when someone's playing the blues. So, you know, our brains are going to be dancing with lots of beautiful thoughts. And I think that that vision is also telling us just how your words are going into us. And you're telling that story. There's a way of shedding that blue beam right into me. And I really appreciate the uh, ocean of light that you poured forth. Thank you. And also, yeah. blue is a disinfecting um, blue light is a disinfecting light. So I think that it's doing too. It's disinfecting things. It's so like a viral cleaner up. Yep. 
Yep, you put a blue light in your bathroom, it'll kill all the bacteria. Yep. Now, I mean, that's just a natural thing, but you can see what it would do in the spiritual, in the spiritual sense. Well, we're learning through science yeah. and religion coming together that this is all connected. And I was just curious if Santos had talked to Raphael, the, the Ralph friend, who's the scientist that connected so much for me with his intellectual awareness and symbolism and learning how ideas and light and concepts are all related. Santos, have you heard from Ralph? Will we get some of his wisdom? I'm uh, speaking to Ralph. Um, we... Um We've spoken about three three times now, and they are mind-boggling little uh, little uh, discussions. He has got so much depth of understanding. Is it is, is it inappropriate if I can just, with a cheerful heart, say, "I told you so"? <laughs> yeah. Love. Well, wait till we get to enjoy the rays that come out of that person. I hope that you'll be with us. How do you like us to call you on the air, sweetheart? You look so pretty. Oh, well, most people call me Spirit Dancer. Um, my real name is Sandra Karen, but I go by Spirit Dancer a lot, so you can call me that. Beautiful Spirit Dancer. Yes, you, you can use that name freely, too, because I, I, I know you've sent the, the fraud back. So. <laughs> That's right. I, well, I'm working on it. I, it hasn't well, gone actually you, you, know, you know what it is? You know exactly what it is. That's what I'm saying. When you yeah. get to that reality of, <gasps> it's already done. The fraud's broken, so now you can use it at will, and you, it, because you know thyself. That's all it takes. I did all the rest of it just for the for those that needed to do something physical to think that they were actually doing something, and it's just right here anyway. It's a mental universe. Okay, I'm a tricky bitch. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a lovely t tricky bit, bitch. <laughs> Right. Well, 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 you've got you've got, uh, you've got both Joe and um, and Katie have something very, very in common in their chart. One's Geminian, that's Kate, and the other one's Virgo, and that's uh, they're both ruled by kinky little Mercury. You see, Mercury, he's a naught, he's not the Messiah. He's a very kinky little boy. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes and you don't want a messiah. Sometimes it's much more fun to have him. <laughs> and Mercury has is very, very clever. It's you see, in the scriptures, Mercury is the word of God. And these people they love they love to use you know, the word process to speak, especially Geminians, you know. Uh, that's another mental sign like Aquarius. It's all in the mind, you see. But Virgoans have this too. Mercury is very, very right minded, you see. So um, I can I can, I can hear it in hear their um, in their speech. speech. It's uh, it's uh, <laughs> it comes out. There's always a cheeky side of Virgoans and Geminians because of Mercury. He's calling us Mercurial again, I suppose. <laughs> oh, it's okay. He can call me anything he wants. Just don't call me late for supper or late for anything else. <laughs> Sorry, you're, like I said, pop my cherry. So. I'm good. I'm I'm satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> but, does anyone hear an echo? I love hearing the echo. Yeah, Santo, you filled my need. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank. Thank. You. Yeah, it's coming from Santo's way. I think the echo. Oh, is it really? It's a no, it's beautiful bouncy oh. though. Very nice. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'll see if I can get rid of that. What do I do? Well, I don't know. You might upset Joseph. He likes the echo. So. It does go up high, up high. Hearing Santo twice over can't be bad, can it? You know, when it's so nice, you want it twice. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, any more views there, Spirit Dancer, on colors and how colors could work, how we could work crystals into things, if I could ask, because you seem very interested in that side of things. The energy um, in crystals and colors. Yeah, I use crystals for everything. I uh, I actually make jewelry with um, some precious stones and crystals. I've even started making headbands for people with uh, to block the harp energy and stuff like that. So I love the crystals. They they speak to me. They're they're part of me. And um, so I use them for everything. I I'm, I haven't studied too much about the colors um, as much as other people have, but um, I do love the energy of the crystals. 
and um, I use them for for so many different things for meditation. Um, I have a crystal grid that my friend Tony helped me build underneath my bed that is just amazing. And I go to bed at night and you connect with the crystals, and the crystals connect with the earth, and it's just, oh, it's so, I wake up drunk in the morning. Could you um, <laughs> yes. give to the people how your crystal grid under your bed is laid out? And uh, another thing, people, if I can just say, and I'm sure Spirit Dancer here would agree, that's why they give you the divan beds. Um, so that they block you off from putting anything under your bed well it's very very simple all you do is put either four little blocks of wood make, sh make sure it's not plastic wood each corner wood and then you can place your crystals under there do you agree there space uh, sorry spirit dancer Mm -hmm. You can do that I'm not an authority on the grid I just set mine up because my friend Tony um, who's listening to the call right now too, he really understands all that. Um, I just learn I'm just learning how to use the crystal oh, grid. You're talking about Tony Zeppi. <laughs> I Hi. love Tony. Hello yeah. Tony. And uh, yeah, Tony and Richard were um, to bring Richard oh, Cumber he... were on the show last night with me. Whoa, yeah. what a show that was guys. But it, I'm just, Tony's been teaching me how to do, use the crystal grid and, um, and you know, astral traveling and everything. I, I got to do that two nights ago and remembered my trip, no, three nights now, um, remembered my three trips that I've taken. And um, so it's, it's, he's taught me how to do that. So I'm learning a lot of really fun things. Um, it's kind of, it's pretty neat. Wow, well, you know, I would love to tell you about a book called The Lazy Way to Crystal Understanding. Okay. It's called The Lazy Way to Crystal Understanding, and I, it's an old book. You can probably only find it on eBay or Amazon, one of those things, but I'd know if you Google it, you probably could find The Lazy Way to Crystal Understanding by Rudy, R-U-D-I. His last name is W-Y-R-S-C-H, Worsh. Rudy Worsh wrote this great book on crystals with a map in it and all kinds of neat things. And he wrote another book, but you definitely need to know about the lazy way to crystal understanding because apparently it's real easy. And the fact that you say you don't know anything doesn't matter because your intuition is guiding you right into the right place. Yeah, my intuition's always done it. I don't know how I know what I do. I just do it. And, um, and then people go, well, how do you do that? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> it just happens the same way when... Because I'm, I'm also a hands-on healer, and so uh, one of the things I do is I'll, I'll put my hand on someone, and, and then their pain will move, and my hand moves right where the pain was. How'd you know where the, to move your hand where the pain was? I, I can't tell you that. I just, I just let my intuition guide me, and, um, and, and people walk away well. So that's, you know, that's part of the process, I guess. I think more people need to start using their intuition a lot more than they do. We're so busy in our world, and we have the television set to, to, to mess with us, which I never watch. But um, there's so many things, if we would just get back to nature. Um, Tony and I were talking earlier, and we were talking about sitting down, and, you know, going outside, being barefoot, you know, with our feet in the earth all the time. And and turns out we both do that. And it, it's just part of, it's just a natural, instinctive thing that we've done, or I've done all my life. I know he's probably been the same way. And, and we just find ourselves, you know, tapping into nature and not even realizing what we're doing. But I think it's important that we start being a little more aware of uh, the nature that's all around us and, and being more connected with it. Absolutely. It's part of being connected to the human nature. Mm -hmm. And I, ha I have to tell you another vision I got. I was with a, <laughs> I was with a friend who's, she's Indian. And she uses stones, and she put crystal stones in my hands. She had me lay on the floor with my hands, my palms up. She put, she called them the twin crystals, and she put one in one hand and one in the other, and then she put the crystal grid around me. And then she took me off on a vision, and um, uh, it was really interesting. This beautiful um, Indian princess came to me, and uh, she had on the leather outfit with all those fringe on it and everything else, and she had beadwork all in her, her beautiful, so she was a princess. She had long black hair, and she took me to the top of a mountain. And um, what was really fun was she said, now look out and see what you see. And I said, well, I, I see beautiful valleys and 
eagles flying in the air and, and, and gorgeous blue sky. There was no king trails, you know. It was really cool. I mean, you could see the streams and the deer and the, and the animals walking around and, and every, everything was peaceful and loving. And, she, and I said, what's this? And she said, well, this is what it was like in the beginning. And I said, oh, I said, this is so beautiful. And then all of a sudden, I'm not standing on the top of the mountain anymore. I'm standing down on the ground um, at a, like a, where its monks were, like a, um, you know, like a church or something, but like a monastery or whatever. And they had these black, dark brown robes on with, with, with um, or rope belts tied around them. And there was these pillars and they were, um, they were all around and these monks were walking around the yard. Nobody was saying anything. It was really quiet. It was walking around. It was like a silent monk thing or something. But I'm, I'm looking at all of this and I see the building and I see the ground and everything was dingy and it. it was kind of a dark feeling and it just didn't feel good. It, it wasn't, it wasn't beautiful like I'd been in the vision before, I mean, the first part of the vision. And I said, why'd you bring me here? And she said, because this is man-made. She said, this is man-made religion. And she said, um, it is not where God is. It's not where nature is. It's not where beauty is. And it's not where love is. And I said, whoa. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. And she says, come with me. And she takes me back to the top of another mountain. But this time, I could see, it, it was like I could see the whole world. And, and I saw this beautiful world, and um, everything was beautiful and green again, and there wasn't all this manly religion around and everything else. And, and I said, why, why are you showing me this? Because this is what we're going back to. And I said, oh, beautiful, we're going back to this, you know, where we can be one with nature again, one with God, one with, you know, the universe, and one with each other. And, and I just, I, I was in awe. And she let me stand there and look at it for a while, and then I, I came back into my body from this vision. And my friend said to me, she says, I saw where you went. And I went, <laughs> it was so beautiful. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you because I do believe that God is taking us, not God, but the universe is taking us back to a place where we're all one again. We're all going to be together, and we'll, we'll think as one and be as one. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yes, I... I second that emotion I echo that understanding of what you saw that's beautiful that's why I think the 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 thing that we talk about the blue ray that we see coming around it's mm -hmm. nice because you know I've even got on my blue lapis I've been wearing around my throat for a long time a friend of mine gave me and it's working you know makes my throat feel better yeah. and um, oh this thing's for sharing your blue consciousness on all those levels Wow. Yes, I think when we go back to our human nature, when we go back to that part of us that can communicate with another person without a device, yeah, mm -hmm. we're all going to be happy. Yeah, I don't need to, I love you, I don't need to talk to you through this device on this new computer, you know, if they're gone, I'll be fine just putting my feet in the dirt. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, and, oh, how wonderful. You know, I like what you said in the story about, um, not only that you're a projector at the beginning, but that when you were doing your massage body work, you know, you, your hand moved and all of a sudden you knew where to go and all that stuff. I wanted to use that part of your story as an example for Cat Wolf to hear and for Santos and Kate. That's a projector at work. See, the projector doesn't know how it gets there. The projector has some kind of incredible insight into us, into the physical people. And the projector that's a non-energy type in the chart can feel the energy coming into it from the energy types and it can analyze it and sort it and go wow you know and, it, and so it can look at somebody and say oh that guy's covered in darkness you know because they know what somebody covered in darkness energetically feels like to them they also know what energy in general feels like and they are able to feel it and recognize it and then help us flow it in a better way so yeah you would definitely be a natural healer that's why we want to bring the projectors on board, because they're not recognized enough. There's all this energy waiting to heal and organize. It's just sitting there on the horizon, right beside us, but we're not aware of it. So the blue beam has to come in, you know, it's the, the little short beam that's sort of, you know, shorter than the long infrared beam. So don't worry, when you get near the blue beam, it's all okay. And uh, they are the ones who, by bringing on you projectors, help us with a lot of information about healing 
And a lot of information about healing that's currently coming out now has to do with electronics and magnets because we're starting to realize how electronic and magnetic and we are and how we move like light and principles of light are connected to spirit and we're learning all this connection about it. So yes, thank you for beaming us good blue stuff again. Yes, yes definitely. Did... And, oh, sorry, I, was just, I just wanted to quickly jump in and say something because uh, <clears throat> this happens to me all the time, excuse me. Um, yes, projectors need to know who they are. Uh, you guys uh, focus on the power of 20 generators. Uh, <laughs> I have learned so much, JR. Thank you so much. Um, one of the things that I would like to ask of everyone listening, um, I set up a I, I set up a room for a reason, um, and I I'm trying to help everyone. The, this is my job, and this is why I set the the gathering of angels, angels with wings, room together, so that people can talk of like-minded people that I have talked to for a very long time and can speak the same as I can. Um, all I would ask is that people stop inundating me all the time, all day, because I will do it. And you're taking, <laughs> me away, you're taking me away from the larger picture. That is the nature of my design. So it is my wish that if you have questions, if you have concerns, there are people in the room if you're there. Others that have never talked to me, please contact me. That's, that's what I'm here for, to gather the angels, not babysit them. Okay, so and I might sound a little harsh there, but uh, quite frankly, the babysitting factor is, is others needing to have me to replace their nanny state for them. Um, I only have two words for that: screw off. Because okay, that's, that, that's the ego, not you. Because if you truly knew you, you wouldn't bother me at all, and you'd be actually doing things with me instead of trying to pry me away from others. And that is not directed at anyone in particular at all, because there are literally hundreds of you that are doing this. And can I we just say, Kate, that you've got a yeah. great book out there for a start, and you've got the other thing. If you just Google um, the, the game that ended all names, uh, I think that's correct. And if yeah. you are on... Um, angels with wings you know please ask for the book because I'm sure many of us actually have the book in our documentation I gave you the answer yeah, yeah. I gave you the answer grow up and read it god damn it I've done my job I'm trying to get it out to everyone else you selfish pricks that's your ego the selfish little bastard the tricky little bastard that I will shred every time I come across it and many of you have felt my wrath and I will bring it forward because that is strictly a masculine intention and I got issue with guys these days sorry <laughs> but I love well, them well it's, <laughs> it's a time of filtering and I'm sure it is. I need, um, spirit yeah, I need, dancer agrees with that also you know it's a time of filtering and it's also a time of appreciation acceptance yes. and embracing yes. and, and not you. question 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 when we're already here I mean we have you know the shows playing over and over again you have the podcasts that are on Kate's websites you know everything's I have there the podcast here that you know if you just ask me on Skype I'll pass it to you um, or, or TCT either one of us turtle or I will pass it to you so there is so much information out there um, that I think we've got to start you know, uh, my, well, my grandfather used to call it pulling your own weight. And, it, you yeah. know, we're walking hand in hand here, um, not because we're toddlers and afraid of falling over, just because we want to embrace the energy of the other. If the other has no energy, how can we embrace that? Yeah, instead of holding hands, let's lock elbows. Yeah, okay. okay, that way I know you're there and I'm not, I'm not having to wipe your arse. And yeah, but we can I didn't, see the nails then, Kate, that you yeah, spent time totally, to yeah, polish on. Uh, you know, if we I, hold hands, we can appreciate the nail polish and things. You know, so. Oh, yeah. In, in, yeah, actually, it's a nice color. I, I love this color. Sue got it for me. Yeah, um, yeah she's awesome. But that, that is just my wish, and I'm sure you guys felt the intensity of what I just said and just how deeply it goes to me. And don't take me away from helping others. That is a totally ego, selfish maneuver. Um, I would ask that you reach out to others. You, you know, you have legs. You have a mind. I'm not dragging people out of a sandbox, kicking and screaming, to go into another one. Um, I'm sorry, I will leave you behind. I'm here to save those that are ready, willing, of their free will choice, to stand with me. I cannot carry every one, and I won't, because that's not my free will choice, and I'd be impinging on your ability to learn 
So, so I think it's a fair term. And do you guys think that people that are clambering to, to get, you know, on, on a silver platter answers, ready, drafted, ten plates and all of those kind of things, don't you think they need to spend a little tiny bit more time, if you like, working out who they are and, and what, you know, the, the stepping stones are really about rather than to just jump in and say, right, I'm not a person anymore, that's not my name anymore. And uh, do you not think that way they're going to be running into brick walls and lots of arguments and fights with people that are much wiser than them on the legal side? That That's how I yeah. feel too. Yeah, just to back you up there, um, I wrote The Dummy's Guide to Freedom for a Reason. That's what it is. The template is there. With those with eyes to see and ears to hear and are willing to stand up, finally, and give us a hand with the torch, it's rather heavy. Just read the damn thing. I wrote it. I put my whole life into it. It's not <laughs> take more of it. I gave you the gift. It's yours. I bought this round. Please, you know, belly up to the table here. There's a feast and wine and, and friends and song. It's already paid for. Stop trying to buy it back. You know? Anyway, this is my, uh, just my tuppence. Well, I took advantage of, of it um, straight away. Um, I remember speaking to Kate. I've known Kate for about five or six months now, and um, uh, Kate's been talking about lose a name, win the game, and it took, oh, I don't know how long. I... I, I I can't remember when you first started talking about this, Kate, but it, it, I, obviously it didn't resonate with me because uh, I wasn't ready. And, uh, you know, I'm sort of agreeing with Kate, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, oh, yeah, lose the name in the game, but I didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. And uh, finally, toward uh, December, uh, probably, uh, I don't know, November, November last year, December, because I just went into court a few times, a couple of times for my mother, a couple of times for my son, you know, once for my niece. Always people around me that just want support and everything like that. And, uh, and um, I find out, yeah, you don't go to court. <laughs> you, don't do, you don't do that. No sovereign goes to court. <laughs> and, um, and so uh, I took, it, um, took the advice. Uh, I took the, uh, I understood it finally. And then on the 13th of uh, January, lodged my um, Denicale tomato uh, document with the Attorney General in London and birth certificate attached. And uh, man, the feeling, wow, the feeling once you've done that and life, the way it feels, uh, uh, it's just, it's got a great feeling about it. It's freedom. It's freedom. The name meant nothing. It was slavery. And I think the easy thing to understand here, isn't it, is the employee goes to the tribunal when he's been naughty at work and he hasn't followed the rules. Um, and if people do not understand what I'm saying there, then you have an awful long way to go. That, that's my view. Yeah, yeah. It's... Um it's quite interesting when you go to court if you ever spend a couple, you know, a, day, a couple of hours or a day there, and you see how they process people. You know, it's <laughs> it's like a sausage factory. You know, <laughs> it's funny, and people <laughs> people just walk in there so ignorant of what is going on. They walk in there, and the judge just asks these young, sometimes 18 year old, 90, very young uh, people. Um, what's your name? They offer their name so willingly, and then the judge says, well, do you consent to this, and do you consent to that? And the people think that they have to consent, and so they say yes, yes, uh, yes, all the time, because they want to, They think they're being in honour. And uh, at the end, you know, judge slams his little uh, little hammer and says, the, you know, you here's the benefits, you get to pay this, and you get to do, you know, a week in jail or whatever like that, and... And um, just always asking, do you consent? My brother came to me, uh, with me to court uh, once, and um, the first thing he said when we walked out, and he goes, he goes, wow, you're right. You're right. The judge cannot do anything without consent. How many times this morning did he say, do you consent? And he was blown away. 
because I've been telling him that. You can't, they cannot do anything without your consent. And he saw that in court firsthand for how many people were um, sentenced that day and given fines and what have you. And it's amazing to see. Um, so um, our purpose is to liberate people from that, uh, from that system. Once we've arrived, you know, you can only lead by example. But it's consent. It's a con that's sent to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the way I hey. see it. Do you consent? We'll con you. We'll, con we'll send you the con. You just got to send it back. Yeah. And how many people go into court and send it back? You know, it's like uh, that ball when you go to tennis. Roger Federer and uh, Rafael Nadal, they're always sending the ball back for some reason, aren't they? You know, they don't want it in their court. <laughs> so as soon as Roger gets the ball at one end, he's quick to send it back, backhand or forehand, isn't he? You have that ball back, Rafael. No, no, you can have it. It's hot. And uh, that's what's going game, on in court. It? The tennis game yeah, it is. It's is the, game. the it's ace. Court. That's what they want, is the ace. Straight in there, you can't return it, because it's just whipped straight past you. Okay, uh, sorry to jump in, guys. Sander, uh, turn your speakers down. It's you that's causing me echoing. It's driving me batty. I'm seeing your screen light up constantly, because your speakers are too loud. Your mic's picking it up, and it's feeding it back. So just turn your speakers okay. down. <laughs> Please, thanks. I've been typing it, but you haven't seen it, so it's all good. It's all good. I love you. <laughs> Flowing low. Is that better? Well, I can't tell until um, until someone else starts talking. Yeah, well, as soon as I say something, I, I, yeah, it's too, still too loud. Yeah, just uh, okay. or if you got headphones, that would be better. Yeah, I'm just getting my headphones out. Add a girl. And, yeah, you've you inspired me to use being less for sure. Totally. Better? Yeah, much better. Oh, look at that! Perfect. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Carry on. I'm dressing just... for the occasion. Yeah, you know, I am I'm today, putting on so. some of the heat, and some of the some of the flame, some of the heat. You know, it was chilly. Seventeenth so. century dress to dress like a judge, or I should <laughs> say, justice. <laughs> you know, we got two of the hottest, What's two of the hottest guys sitting. I'm looking at right now. So this is just like this is eye candy. Look at you. <laughs> I put on my blue eye candy, if you didn't notice. That was for the lovely lady. So, um... I think know. he's referring to you there, spirit dancer, to be quite honest. Oh, I think he's yeah. taking a shine. I think he's taking a shine. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've got to reflect back the beauty that is spirit dancer. I've got to reflect back that blues, and it's a beautiful blues, you know. Color is really important, and how we color the tone of our voice is really important, too. So we're all learning how to apply the, the beautiful information we're sharing with each other. This is awesome. So I'm just reflecting back a blue beam for Spirit Dancer. <laughs> and I saw that, Kate, uh, for the listeners out there, you, we can see each other on video occasionally, which is great. And so... Well, we wish you were here in the room with us, and then you could see what we're talking about. <laughs> but to people who are tuning in and have no idea what we're talking about, it must sound quite amusing to them if they come into the middle of one of these <laughs> conversations. Yeah, a, a great big love in. It's beautiful. It's just yeah. it's, it's it's pure raw energy, and I know yes. that you can feel it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Santos, I love what you said about the tennis game. I've always wondered about that. And that makes sense. Here's the ball, the ball, the devil. You take it back. I don't want the devil in my court. And I never thought about it. It's a game when you're trying to get rid of the ball. Your tennis is played on those emerald tablet, balanced, square, rectangular, pie places. And we never noticed underneath our eyes was two guys battling against the ball there. So, yeah, ball. Yeah. Or the by ball. It's a, the ball. It's a ball court just like when you go to court it's a court of ball or baal it's different spelling it's the it, they, their god is baal baal and you know and where the word testify comes from santos don't you uh, testify yeah <laughs> the word no testicle <laughs> 
Rob Menard uh, <laughs> says it so well. Uh, do you know it, Kate? Oh, I know of it. It's, um, I just uh, would rather not go there. <laughs> and Sorry. I think that's true. I mean, we were talking about the justice system earlier, and I think um, it'll be interesting to see their testifying uh, <laughs> statements. <laughs> Sorry, uh, yeah, system gutter. Always end up down there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Back to you. It's all right. You know, all the guys listening appreciate it because that's why they all play these sports. That's why golfers <laughs> like to talk about their clubs and their balls, you know. That's when that all and comes. And there's holes in one. <laughs> and you know, golf is uh, gentlemen only, ladies forbidden. Yes, that's where it. Originates. No, not any longer. Not well, any that's longer. Where it the originated. women. <laughs> well, you know, the, the only reason they wanted to keep women out of the sport, Cat Wolf, was because they didn't want the women to show them up. Because they knew as soon as they got onto the green, <laughs> we knew who was going to end up on top. We knew the women were going to dominate that too. You know, like they're going to be better and make it look easier than all the rest of us do. You know, women golfers are beautiful. I'm glad that they're finally there. But yeah, for a while it was a, a woman's only sport. But not because they didn't want the women there. It's because the women had better things to do. Because once the women decided where they wanted to be, they came on through. And they rode a blue beam. That's how they got there. <laughs> there you go. And that's why they're called blue balls when you don't get to use them well. <laughs> well, you guys should see this outfit he's wearing. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. He's a hottie. Um, <laughs> I'm very yeah, I, on occasion, I get, to, I get to sit across Misato because, uh, of course, they're having, uh, they're getting towards the end of their summer down there. But, uh, you know, uh, many times uh, in his nice Italian Italian muscle shirt and just kind of doing his own thing. And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right. Hey, listen, you guys got it going on, so keep it going on. You know, and it's that whole energy too, right? And this is the whole nurturing thing with me. And it, I, I just want to wrap you guys in love. That's all I want to do is just create this beautiful canvas of void around you, so that you can create. You know. Well, so far so good. Yeah, I think so. I think we're doing fine. You know, but we need all the projectors to show up because. Uh, Wow, you know, based on the numbers uh, in the ratios, whoa, we're running pretty, pretty tight with projectors showing up, like massive amounts uh, as far as. Well, the we ratio. put out the call. We did the calls out, you know. Yeah, and and, and listen, they understand a vocation. When they hear a calling, they respond. Yep. So yeah. we're calling projectors home. We need you. We'll power everything up, and you guys just take it and choof, right through the middle, wedge it. Big wedgie to the system. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the intention. The intention is to uh, bring back, bring back freedom and um, bring back uh, true uh, forbearance because the system tends to not only register us in, in, in a one system kind of thing, they've got all their little divisions below that, you know, like you've got your, franch your, your church franchises, you've got labels like Baptist and Jehovah's Witness, and they're all divided down there. <laughs> Everywhere you go down below the registration, you know, sub-registration, sub the death certificate, so you <laughs> stamp that death certificate, bang, for thing we're getting below that is even fragmented even further and there's more division down there oh man i mean you've got oh yeah you know you've got little kids in uniform even i mean look you can't, you can't make this stuff up i wonder what extraterrestrials think when they see little children march to school at five years of age in uniform for god let's keep them all formed in one little mold like little chickens. Just, yeah, just feed them uh, into the system. They're going to come out as little chicken turds on the other anyway. In fact, if we process them as efficiently as we learn how to process everything else, soon we'll get them to even feed themselves themselves. They won't even know that they're coming out the other end of the machine while they're chasing their own tails. Yeah, we're a society that's stooped low enough to uniformly 
file into formation like a military operation children. Now think about that. Like, really? Did, did we just evolve to the spot where we thought that turning our children into a military formation, putting them in a uniform and requiring them to learn some stuff that we're going to tell was the best idea we could come up with? Is that really the future we want to project our children into? So Skydancer, what do you see in the future? Do you see us getting out of some of these uniforms and expressing our uniqueness? And what do you see when you look at us now or the future? I'm just curious. What do you see about that? That answer here, Chris. We also have a question from Pat Catchpole in the chat. And the question is, what's a projector? So could either either of you answer that one, please? For Pat. I'd be glad to answer yeah. that question. Because I think Pat's gone, That's but if Pat comes there. in. Pat, what? That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so um, a projector is somebody who in the uh, human design chart, which is a ge genetic code chart you can find on the internet, real easy, for free, that it's one of the four classifications of an energy type. And it's one of the four classifications of an energy type because it's the beginning of understanding a level of uniqueness. And we learn to separate things by qualities. Like, you know, if you're a jeweler, you separate your uh, gems or your beads or your crystals by their qualities. So you, you, know, you begin to classify things and divide them so you can learn. Some of what we've had to learn in our lives is how to go through the process. Well, when you come back up from the process and you realize there's four types. There's a projector, there's a reflector, there's a manifester, and a generator, and you put those four types into context so you can see the relationship to each other. Projector is a sound or a word that's one of four words fitting into a classification group of words so that you can see what branch of energy is this person having a life experience with. And Skydancer being a projector is somebody who's experiencing life as a projector does. And I'm experiencing life as a generator does, which is a different experience. And Katie is a generating manifester. Is experiencing life as a generating manifester. And we each have our own experience. And so what happens is a projector is an experience that doesn't have the physical energy in its system. It's hardwired differently than the rest of us. And if you've been to an uh, Apple computer store recently, you've held an old computer with a hard drive in it, and it's real heavy, the MacBook Pro. And then you go to hold one of the new computers called the MacBook Air, or whatever they're called. They're so light. There's nothing in that computer. It almost feels like it's a feather with a screen. That's because they don't need the moving parts. They don't need the hard drive anymore. They don't need uh, a fan so the computer weighs a lot less because it's just little flash drives all put together into a computer, and there's no moving parts. Well, a projector's experience is like that. The projector doesn't have a fan and a motor inside of it. It doesn't have all that phenomena of life that's generating energy into the field. A projector is like a crystal or a transistor radio. It's receiving the energy that's in the field, and it's feeling that energy come into it, and it has to sort that energy out in order to conduct it and send it into the future, into the current, the beam into the future of light. It projects light into the future. It projects the spiritual current. And when that projection of light occurs, it occurred because the entity who's having a human experience as a projector is living down here as part of a processing unit in the system that we're all a part of. So the projector is a non-energy producing type, but is an energy type that conducts, organizes, and efficiently uh, beams the spiritual current of light into the future. And it does that at a level of information and intellect between humans when it gives advice. 
it does that in many ways. And at the physical level, as Sky Dancer shared with us, even as a massage therapist, they have those abilities. But their life is not like ours. We generators, we generate a tractor beam of frequency that makes life gush with power. Um, the generators and the manifestors, they're like the bull in the china shop, walking through the universe and crashing into things that don't even know they're crashing into stuff. Well, projectors are fragile. They're like the MacBook Air. They don't have all that guts and stuff inside of them. They're like the teacup in the china shop. And if you're not careful, you crush them. So the first thing to do is to, to be polite and see them and go, oh, look, there's teacups. I better be careful. But, you know, better change my dance so that I can be in recognition of the other one and dance with the recognition that my energy could be very harmful to that energy. So I'm going to be aware of my energy and organize it in such a fashion that I'm going to be a loving energy that doesn't crush that projector. In fact, I'm going to say, well, you probably have some advice for us. You know, you probably have a way of thinking that we haven't thought of. Would you share it with us? Because I'm going to let the occurrence on the event horizon of that cup on my shelf of that crystal that I encounter that I see outside of me called the projector I'm going to let it tune me a little bit and I'm going to let the projector's beam and the projector's knowledge and wisdom do things because that's what the projector is here for so the projector is one of four classifications whose role is to wait for the invitation to activate its energy because see if the if the projector wants to come in and to start talking to us if it hasn't been invited well then it just bounces around and gets hurt by us but see we've invited this projector into our conversation because we recognize her and go wow tell us more and we do that in life too we need to be doing more of that and a projector has been waiting for the energetic invitation it feels the energy of the other people and it knows when it's welcome and it comes in but before it learns how to do that gracefully, it gets bounced around a lot. So Sky Dancer is a person who has a lot of insight into us and can tell us about us. And we can say, what's it like to be with the experience of generators? What do we feel like to you? And when Sky Dancer or anybody who's a projector tells us, we learn about ourselves. So I'm going to sit back and let Sky Dancer tell me what do you perceive about us generators? You're new to this information, but you're not new to feeling it. What's it like for you? What's your experience of life like when you feel the energy of people, and how does it affect you? Tell us what a projector is. Yeah. Well, projector for me, well, I can tell you, I mean, I know what, what I am and what I do, but, um, but for when, I'm, when I'm feeling the energy of other, yeah, when, I, when I'm feeling... Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it great discovering yourself? <laughs> Isn't it cool? I would say so too, Joseph. It's the first time it's, far. I would say too, Joseph. It's time to stop thinking. I think this has been a problem for a lot of people. Okay, um, and they're trying to find the solutions outside of themselves. So it's time to stop thinking. Okay, we, we were told to undo all of our learning. And that includes thinking, because you must think. And if you don't think in class, <laughs> get it? If you don't think in class, then you are punished and you are corrected. Okay? They wreck your core if you don't mm -hmm. do as you're told. So it's time to stop thinking. It's time to stop trying to find the words. The words are all there. If you don't know them by the time you're five, you're lost. So you've got to start to feel again. So you learn to feel the frequencies and waves and energies rather than searching through Dick Shun Aries, you know, whoever that Ari is, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, Harry, I imagine Harry's there's a few the God Aries. Of War. Yeah, there's a few Aries in London, isn't there, you know? Oh, shut up. Aries the God of War, and of course then there's Aries the sign, which is the head uh, uh, to lead, lead the body in, in, uh, in terms of the thinking, and that's why people like Santos being... Uh, and Aries is absolutely critical because there is there is the head 
of Aries telling everyone to get in to the body. So if you can't listen to your own head, <laughs> my Sando, partner is yeah, like, is exactly yeah. the same. Kate, he's the head. Yeah. Um, his yeah. feet think. Let's run really quickly, even when we can't. <laughs> Isn't that correct, Santo? <laughs> oh, yeah. Arians, they love to... They don't need taxis, do you? You don't need taxis or cars. <laughs> you just run everywhere, don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, always running. I Sorry, was, so uh, the, I thought, was... the thought. Yeah. It is, yep. And we've got... Yeah top of the hour so that's about uh, another show for the week and um, I think next week I do have someone scheduled in uh, an author I believe uh, metaphysics but anyway I'll check that and uh, we'll do this again down the track real quick guys because I think uh, we make a nice little team we have a lot to contribute on the same uh, level and uh, we will certainly do that and I hope that the listeners uh, have enjoyed today's uh, show and the format and the information we are here to provide the uh, the very best in reclaiming dominion and the very best for uh, true and true empowerment you know and it's based on consciousness uh, our um, point of view, our perspective is consciousness, whereas um, I find that uh, a lot of so-called people are still, <laughs> you know, still working with the uh, pers prosperity consciousness type of empowerment, you know, that false one which, uh, you know, pe leads people astray. I mean, it's all about consciousness. It's not about prosperity in any kind of material way. And once we uh, awaken to that consciousness, well, there's no stopping one, you know. So um, I hope the listeners enjoyed today's show, and I hope uh, that you can indicate to me by means of some feedback as to whether you would like us to uh, have this format on a regular basis. Joe Annacelli, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you, Kate of Gaia. Thank you, uh, Spirit Walker. And Kat... As usual, you're always there to help like an angel. Hey, Catwolf, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, love you. Love you, and thank Kat you. 